Our scripture today comes from the book of Genesis, the first chapter, uh, the end of the chapter that describes God's creation of us. And today, in our season of giving thanks, we want to give thanks to God for creation. Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 31. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in His image. In the image of God, He created them. Male and female, He created them. God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that He had made. And indeed, it was very good. As many of you may know, I teach at Campbell University. But before I started teaching at Campbell, my wife Beth and I taught at Mars Hill University near Asheville. About three weeks before we were to move away from Mars Hill, we were invited to a party. Our friend who was the chair of the history department was having his 60th birthday and his wife and his friends uh, threw a wonderful party for him. There was uh, great food and uh, there was uh, a fun time and everyone was relaxed and enjoyed one another and it seemed as if everyone came together as one great community. And so on the way home, Beth and I had a serious conversation about whether we were doing the right thing to move away from the people at that party. A great party is like that. You feel so connected, you don't want it ever to end. What are some of the things that made... Uh, parties you've attended great. Great parties have careful preparations. So that rules out those parties that happen when you get a text that says Jimmy's parents are out of town uh, party at Jimmy's house tonight. No preparations. Great parties have a theme. Decorations are chosen carefully. There's great food, of course, and plenty for everyone. And uh, often there's entertainment. Maybe music, a band, activities. But the most important part of any party is the people who are there. And everyone knows that they are welcome. And they've been invited specially to be there. And all that they need for that time has been taken care of. A great party is really a gift from the host to the people at the party. And it's an opportunity to relax and to feel welcomed and to celebrate and just to enjoy the generosity of the host. Now you may be thinking, 
Sure, parties are great, but we're here to worship God. Well, have you ever noticed how many parties are in the Bible? In the book of Deuteronomy, in chapter 26, the Israelites were instructed to bring an offering of all the first fruits of their produce. And they were to dedicate the offering to God, and then they were to celebrate a great feast and to share it with those who did not have land to grow food of their own. Deuteronomy 26.11 says, Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given you. The prophet Isaiah, in chapter 25, describes the full coming of the kingdom of of God and says it will be like a tremendous feast. In chapter 25, verse 5, the prophet says, Then you'll gather all the people together on this mountain, and there'll be a rich feast of, of wonderful food and of rich, fine wines. The kingdom of God will be like a party. Jesus, during his earthly ministry, was really accused by some of going to too many parties. They said he was a, a wine bibber and a glutton, that he, that he had too much fun. But Jesus taught that the kingdom of God is like it's like a wedding feast that a king gave for his son. The kingdom of God, Jesus said, is like a party. And if you're invited, you want to be at that party. Even at the very end of the Bible in the book of Revelation, in chapter 19, we hear about what it will be like when God's work in creation is finally done. It'll be like a, like a feast, like a supper, like a marriage feast. Celebrating the marriage between Christ and His church. This month, we're celebrating together a season of giving thanks. And today we're focusing on giving thanks for creation. What do you think about when you think about creation? I'd like to suggest that God's gift of creation is actually like a great party. Think about it. A great party has great preparations. In Genesis 1, we read about God's preparation for creation. Creation is a wonderful unfolding of God's plan. First, God separated light from darkness and created time. Then God set out the big framework of creation. God separated the sky above from the earth below and the land from the waters. And before any creature was created, God made a place for those creatures to live. Creation is, is orderly. It's stable. Many people think there's a tension between uh, what we learn about creation from the Bible and what we learn about creation from science. But actually, we can learn what we know through science because creation has an order. And is so reliable and predictable. Really, there's no reason why the world around us has to be orderly or it has to make sense. But thanks to God, it does. Do you remember this past August? People traveled and took vacations and gathered together to witness the total solar eclipse. 
here in our country. That event had been calculated for decades. And it was predicted down to the second. God's creation is so reliable for us. We can count on it. Some people think that God made the world and everything in it in a short amount of time. Some think that God made everything necessary for the world so that it developed over billions of years into the world that we have now. But science tells us about the when and the how of creation, but the Bible tells us about the who and the why. Creation is God's gift, and it reflects to us the goodness of God. A great party has preparations. A great party also has decorations. Can you think of any greater decorations than what we see in God's world around us? We have the sun and the moon and stars. Billions of stars. God is an extravagant decorator. Not only all of that, but there are the oceans and the mountains, uh, the rivers and the lakes, the canyons, rainforests, glaciers. Maybe you're a beach-loving person. And I get that. There are a few things in life that the smell of salt air can't make better, right? Or maybe you're a mountain-loving person. That... Uh, some elevation lifts up your spirits and makes your load a little lighter. Whatever part of creation uh, moves you and inspires you, there are more causes for our wonder and our thanksgiving than we could ever have time to name. As a well-known children's hymn says, all things bright and beautiful. All creatures great and small. All things wise and wonderful. The Lord God made them all. A great party has great food too, right? And think about everything in creation that we enjoy. The book of Genesis makes clear that God provided food for God's creature. That's an interesting observation. People who lived at the same time as ancient Israel also had their stories of creation. But they had a very different view. When they described the creation of humans, they said that the gods made humans to work and to grow food, to offer it in sacrifices so that there would be someone, people, to feed the gods with their sacrifices. Genesis tells us that it's exactly opposite of that. We don't feed God, but God feeds us. Creation. It's like one enormous worldwide party. We haven't had to do anything for all that God has made to be provided. It's provided for us as God's gift. God has thought of everything. Great parties also have, have a theme. And the theme of God's party is in verse... 28 that we read God blessed them and God said to them be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it the theme of God's party of creation is blessing blessing is the power of God to live and to enjoy the life that God gave us and to share that life 
with one another. Creation is God's gift to each one of us. And we are invited to enjoy it and to share it. What should our response be to the goodness of creation? Well, we should do what we do whenever we're invited to any party. We should accept the invitation to enjoy the good things that our host has prepared for us. And we should share it with everyone else who is invited. And we should take the opportunity to get to know the host of our party and to show our appreciation and our gratitude and our praise for all the good that God has shared with us. But you may be thinking, if creation is a party, something's gone wrong. My life is not a party. Well, I, we know from life and, and from the movies that parties sometimes go wrong, don't they? In preparation for today, I looked up, uh, I did a search of the ten most popular movie parties. And it turns out they're all about parties in which the people at the party end up taking over the party and trashing the house. You could probably name some of those movies. It seems there's something in us that takes a, a sad kind of pleasure in seeing things get broken. And there's something broken in us that takes a, a sad pleasure in breaking other things. Creation is like God's party but something has gone wrong. The guests of the party have taken over. And rather than appreciating and enjoying God's gifts, we have decided that it is more fun to destroy what God has made than to enjoy it and share it with one another. We've trashed God's party. You know, parties... Uh, go wrong when the guests start to hoard what's been provided for everyone. They're afraid that there won't be enough. And so they divide it uh, among themselves and there's not enough to go around. Parties go wrong when people think that the host has invited the wrong people. Disagreements arise and, and even fights break out because some people at the party think people don't belong. We know that something's gone wrong with this good creation God has given us. The amazing thing about God's party of creation is it didn't have to happen. The Bible tells us that God has lived in perfect community. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in peace and harmony for eternity. God has everything God needs. But God loves us so much that God made a place for us in this world and made a world to sustain us. The goodness of God is that God has chosen not to be without being with us. But we've trashed God's party. We've sought to keep God's goods for ourselves. We've divided ourselves up and gotten into fights with other people 
who don't think we belong or we don't think they belong. God has every right to kick us out of his party. But but God is good and creation reveals how good God is. God has chosen not to be without being with us. And so God chose in Jesus Christ to be God with us in a new and saving way. God came to us in Jesus Christ to show us how we can live together and love God and share God's good gifts with everyone. And Jesus came to repair the damage that we have done to God's good creation. Even to pay the price in His own body and with His own life for what we have done to destroy God's party. Through what Jesus has accomplished, God is at work to keep the party going for us and to help us to share God's good creation with other people. What is our part in what God is doing? As followers of Jesus, we can learn from Jesus how to live in this good creation as a part of God's party. From Jesus, we can learn to appreciate the goodness of the creation and to let that goodness draw us closer to God. As Jesus' followers, we can learn to trust that God has enough for us. That we can share what we have with others because we worship a God of abundance. As followers of Jesus, we can learn like Jesus to share the love of our Father with all the people that God has brought to this party. The Bible says Jesus was a friend of sinners. And in Romans 15, Paul instructed us, welcome one another just as Christ has welcomed you to the glory of God. As followers of Jesus, we're also a part of the creation God is doing. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, we read that we are saved by grace through faith. And that is a part of our salvation. We are God's handiwork. God is still creating in us. God is creating a good work, a masterpiece in you as a part of God's good creation. We can give thanks for what God is doing in our life. And maybe the best part is we can share the invitation to God's party with other people and tell them the good news of all that God has provided for us and all that is that God has done for us through Jesus Christ. All things bright and beautiful. All creatures great and small. All things wise and wonderful. The Lord God made them all. He gave us eyes to see them and lips that we might tell how great is God Almighty who has made all things well.